So again, this could cause some problems down the road if we take a look at it, because we have inhibited a pretty important pathway for our bodies. What is up guys? Today we are going to continue the investigation series on what role DHT plays in our bodies and how it works together with testosterone and how alpha reductase inhibitors can play a role in our bodies. Before we start the video guys, I gotta make this announcement. This is purely entertainment. I'm not a doctor, I'm not your doctor. You should see a physician by any kind of medical advice you want. You should see a professional. You shouldn't ask me, don't do what I do. Let's continue. So while I have been continuing my studies on DHT and the endocrine system to know what role it plays in our bodies for this series, I have come across some new stuff that is also new to me that I wanted to share with you guys. So let's start off out with the new stuff I had found out. So first off, DHT follows usually a main pathway through our body and our endocrine system and reduces to metabolites. And in the end, we are gonna take a look at one of the metabolites named androsterone. Now androsterone is, as I just said, a metabolite from DHT, meaning that it is derived from DHT. We need DHT to make androsterone. Androsterone has several functions in our bodies, namely some of them we know from stuff like alcohol, which makes us happy. It, it provokes the GABA receptors. This is also one of the receptors that androsterone is responsible for regulating. Besides alcohol, if you don't know about that, there's also the GHB, also known as fantasy, the drug that bodybuilders used to take in the old days to raise their IGF-1 and GH levels. Now these stuffs will interact with our GABA receptors. And what the GABA receptor mainly does is that it is responsible for some of our sexual desires and some of our happiness levels or whatever we'll call it. Mainly why you get a sexual desire from drinking alcohol and you will feel a little happier and in a better mood. It's because it regulates or activates the GABA receptors. The same thing goes for androsterone. It works the same way. So without that, you might have a decreased sexual desire and you might have decreased happiness level or whatever we'll call it, mood levels. So if any of this rings a bell for you, this is because you can actually link this to the post finasteride syndrome that we usually talk about and you hear a lot about. Because if you have reduced GABA receptor activation, you might feel a little depressed and you might don't want to have sex or anything, a lower sexual desire. And since DHT is responsible for making androsterone, and if we inhibit the DHT, well, we don't make androsterone, and we have reduced GABA activation and hence reduced sexual desire and hence also a reduced mood. So that could be something for the mythical post finasteride syndrome, but let's take a little deeper dive into it. So first off, if you're wondering why I'm taking out my cell phone, it is because I'll show it right up here. I have found some pathways that I want to share with you to show you how hormones work and how they will be a substrate for something else and metabolite into something different. So the first thing I want to show you is this chart. If we take a look at it, this is the main pathway that DHT usually takes. And if we look at it, we can conclude that by inhibiting DHT, we also inhibit the pathway of 3-alpha-DH and 3-alpha-SD5. So again, this could cause some problems down the road if we take a look at it, because we have inhibited a pretty important pathway for our bodies. But before we all jump on the no finasteride wagon again, 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 I have broadened out the scope a little bit again for you guys to show you a wider spectrum of how the endocrine system works. And by that, I'm going to present yet another graph for you. If you don't know what a backdoor pathway is, it is exactly as the name suggests. And if we look at the pathway of DHEAS and cholesterol, we are actually able to track yet another way for androsterone via the CYP17A1. So as you can see, if you just follow the gray arrows, you can see that's a backdoor pathway for this hormone. And 
Although it is a backdoor to cover the missing conversion from the primary pathway, it is yet not something that has been concluded totally. This means that I'm still searching on ocean and land and whatnot for more studies. So this means more or less that I'm still searching for some studies to conclude whether this is enough to sustain our bodily functions or if it's still lacking in efficiency. If any one of you out there should be in luck and know of some studies that I haven't seen on this exact pathway and subject, please send them to me so I can share it with everyone else here in our community. But this backdoor pathway proves that we don't actually need DHC for our bodily functions, although some of it might be reduced since we don't know how much is converted, but we know that it is not eliminated, which is a very important thing to know when taking finasteride or reducing DHC to some sort. Mostly because some of the functions of some of the substrates or metabolites that we see here can either be beneficial or be problematic. It is all about what perspective we look at it. Just as when we look at DHC, for some it's a problem because they lose hair and for others they talk about some pump that they lose if they reduce the DHC. So a hormone can have several function in your body and depending on what you might need, it can vary from person to person. But just as I thought that I was more or less done with checking out the backdoor pathways, this is where it got really interesting because I actually discovered a new backdoor that I had never known about. Now note before I'm going to get any comment on this, it is not a newly discovered backdoor pathway in general. It is just something new to me and it might be new to some of you and I want to share that with you. So in that sense, it is new for this channel. There are tons of specialists out there who knows about this already and it has been established long time ago. So I'm going to drop it up here again. It's a little more advanced this time, but if we follow the red arrows, we can see in the bottom that our androsterone, which we have determined to be able to create via a backdoor, can give another backdoor to DHT. Since it uses the AKR1C1-4 and not the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, it proves that whether you take finasteride or something else, you cannot inhibit your DHT totally. This is also some backbone to prove why even if you take 10 milligrams of finasteride daily, you will never eliminate all your DHC. And this is mainly because, as you can see at the DHC, that it can be converted through another backdoor again and finasteride cannot help this at all. So this concludes, at least for me, that I'll always be able to produce DHC whether I'm taking 10 tablets of finasteride daily and I'm not that concerned about my DHT levels falling because I'll always be able to produce enough DHT to regulate my bodily functions. They might be reduced but that is a perspective question because some of the hormones you would like to have, someone, some of them you would like to not have in your body. Because in the end guys, what you need and what I need might vary a lot. This is actually why we have WEF ranges for several hormones and they can vary a lot because what works for you might not work for me and they actually vary from region to region and person to person. So in Denmark we have a lower threshold for low testosterone than in the US because in Denmark we don't believe that much in low testosterone while in the US you don't need it that low before you can get TRT. And this proves why science not always is just straightforward because depending on who you're asking, they would say that some hormone needs to be in some range and some of them doesn't really need to be elevated or some of them can even be decreased and, wouldn't, and it won't be that bad for you. So guys, this is by no means a conclusion. It is no advice or anything for any one of you. This is just me putting out some information on how DHC works and proving to you guys that you will produce DHC whether you take finasteride or something else. So if you're scared about that, don't be. But still, this is only information so that you can take an educated choice yourself to keep yourself healthy and well-being. With that said, until next time, cheers.